Welcome back. You're with CNN IBN and we're bringing to you the highlights of day one of the Hindustan Times Leadership Summit. Is cricket as we know dead? Well, three of the strongest voices of the game were on one stage, Sunil Gavaskar, Ravi Shastri and Sir Richard Hadley. All three forms of the game, they say, can coexist, but country comes first. Market forces are not interested in test cricket. Isn't that going to be a problem going ahead? I think this is where the administrators can protect test cricket you know, can protect test cricket by giving emphasis to the fact that uh, you must play for your country and uh, balancing it right, cut down on the number of uh, one-day internationals instead of seven, five, instead of, uh, you know, an X number in a year should be played. So Karen that, Barry, yeah. you were saying that uh, with test cricket, you know, crowd attendances are waning and perhaps in some parts of the world that's definitely happening. And does it really matter in a test <laughs> match whether crowds turn up or not? It's being televised. It means the sponsors are getting extra value because of the duration of the game. So it shouldn't really worry the sponsors whether the grounds are full or not. The players, yes, clearly they'd love to have a lot of people in the grounds to help lift their performances. But the test game should still go on as they are. And, you know, you're talking about reducing uh, test matches from five to four days. That day-night cricket. I mean, you can't have day-night test cricket, in my view, because simply the conditions during the day and the evening will vary considerably which will disadvantage one team or the other. You'd have to introduce a different coloured ball. Test cricket is about the red ball. That's what statistics are all about. Then you'd, if you're introducing a new coloured ball, you've got to have a new set of statistics. If you're going to play four-day test matches, you're not going to get as many results, for example. Teams can play for a draw. Spin bowlers will get played out of the game simply because the pitch deteriorates more on the fifth day than on the third or fourth day. So, um, you know... We can't allow these changes to happen in the, game, in the test game. Something is sacred about test cricket. It survived 130-odd years, and it probably will for a lot longer, no doubt about that. Why tamper with it? So, Adam, here's one for your crowds you know, in India. You're saying there's a worry in India, empty stands. Spread test cricket to smaller states. Leave one-day cricket for the metros. You will get full houses in metros. You try and take a test match to a smaller you know, venue, you will get 25, 30,000 people easy because they're starved of cricket. They've not seen it. You take it there. That's, that's one thing for the future in India. There's a perception that all these changes that have been happening because of the influence of the BCCI and money power, there is a perception. <coughs> is, is the perception of the BCCI being a bully correct, in your opinion? I don't think so at all. I said then people have very short memory. When, when, when I played in my time, uh, you, you could call the bullies being Australia and England. You know, anything they said, we sucked up. Why? Because, again, market forces, the bucks came from there. You know, they controlled the world game. Most of the money that was generated for the sport came from those parts of the world. Today, when 80% of the income, 75, 80% of the income for a world event comes from India, then uh, at times when India opens its mouth, you jolly well listen to it. What's wrong in that? Why call them bullies?